Hello everybody, welcome to today's special episode about armor stands. We're going to be creating a plugin for 3D drops. That's right, it's going to be pretty damn amazing. Now, I have one ask to you guys, please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Most people are watching this for free and they never even subscribe. It takes me a lot of work and effort to make these videos. The least you can do is give it a nice thumbs up and subscribe before I reveal this code to you. And yes, of course, the full source code will be available at the end of this video, I'm going to reveal the link. However, it's not advisable that you just copy paste this. You should understand line by line. So please keep watching. Also, if you want to learn more about Minecraft plugins, even if you've never coded anything, we have Project Orient course that includes a full Java training, a full 30 day money back guarantee. And of course, it has live coaching calls because why not? I'm on there and I'm going to review your code personally. The link to the course is in this video description. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to be listening to a new event when the player drops an item. And by the way, guys, if this sounds like too much, if you don't understand what the event handler means and what the public void means, you need to learn Java. Project Orient can help you with that. However, if you just want to learn about the event handlers and how to catch different game events, I do have a free video. It's one of the first videos in this Minecraft plugin tutorial uh, development series. So just look back and I'll explain how these events work. So basically what we have to listen to is whenever I drop an item like this, right? And then we have to inside this event, what I'm going to do, well, I, first of all, I'm interested in getting the dropped item. So I'm going to get event dot get item drop like this one. The item is not the same as item stack. If you've coded for plugin uh, for bucket before, the item stack is an abstract class holding the same information which you have in your inventory, such as Hellbrick has a custom name, whereas the item represents an actual entity. That means this flying thing is an actual item. Uh, is an actual entity, sorry. And this invisible armor stand is also an entity. So big difference here. The item is an actual entity that ticks in the world, exists outside of your inventory, whereas this only holds uh, information about the actual item. So if you want to get the item stack from the actual entity, all you have to do is call get item stack on there, just to make that very clear. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to make a new bucket Runable, that's right. And we're going to be running this run as a timer. Then we have to pass into instance that we made a couple of videos earlier. And then basically I'm going to be starting this right away. And then every single tick, or maybe for performance sake, I can increase it to every two ticks. So 20 ticks equals to one second, right? So, so pretty much 10 times per second, we're going to be checking if the item is on ground. And if the item is in fact on ground, then also because I can cancel the task, I can delete the item and I can actually spawn the armor stand. Also important thing, if the item for some reason is dead or is no longer valid, for example, you have an anti-lag plugin, I also want to just cancel the task and return the code however, because then it doesn't make sense to spawn anything. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the item's location. And if you get the location of any living entity, this is going to return a clone of its location. So even if I add some, some things into it, the entity will not move because the modification will only happen inside your code here since this returns a clone. Now, when I'm going to get the location, I do want to make sure to add plus um, 0.5 to the X axis and minus 0.5 to the Z axis, and then decrease the Y axis by 0.8. Reason being is that if I did not do that, then these items will appear, you know, with an offset, it's going to appear weird, like it's going to it's instead of it being here, it's actually going to be there, right? And so, or it's going to, it's going to be floating in the air. You can of course not do this and then just see what I'm talking about. I just spent a couple of minutes looking through the F3, right? And tweaking the position. You can of course tweak it further to achieve maximum perfection. It's the first thing, the other thing we need to uh, delete the rotation from the item because then it's just going to look weird. Although maybe you can keep it right because all of these, as you can see, they have the same rotation. So I keep that up to you. Of course, in this video, I'm just going to give you the basic setup. If you want to learn the more advanced version, check out Project Orion, or you can try playing with this yourself. 
And then what I can do, I can get the world and I can simply spawn at the given location, the custom armor stand entity. Now, first things first we have to do, we're going to set this entity not to be visible and I'm going to disable its gravity. If you don't do this, the armor stand is just going to fall through the ground. If you don't do this properly and if you obviously set it to visible, maybe I can show this to you how it's going to look like you're, you're actually going to see the entire stand. And then we're also going to set the arms to true. This is going to set whether this has arms or not. And then we can actually set the item in hand to the arms uh, and set it to item get item stack as I explained earlier. So next up, what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually mark the entity with invisible persistent data container. I do have a full video on how this works, so I'm not going to explain this in details, but basically what this will do, this will set a custom item drop time, which is a key that I created uh, a field for right here in a separate keys class. So you can just create the same and basically assert, assert the current time in milliseconds, which is going to be a long type. This is really stupid that they have to, that you have to explicitly set the type that, that paper cannot figure it out from the actual system. But if you look at this, this method, it'll return long right here. So basically just duplicate the same return type. And why am I doing this? Well, because if I drop the item, you can see that there's a slight delay and this simulates vanilla. When you drop it, you have to wait for as much as you want uh, before you can actually pick it up. Cool. So that's the first thing. I guess that's pretty much it for the start. Of course, you can play around with the armor stand more. And if you want more rotation with the armor stand, you can get the arms right here. For example, you can get the right arm pose, and then you can simply use the set methods to set its angle. You can just, you can just experiment with this and you'll see how that is going to work on the screen. I think it's the best if you see it visually on the screen. Great. In the main class, what I'm actually going to do, I'm actually going to just duplicate the scheduler task. And the reason we don't use bucket, we have used task, I believe, yes, because we added folia support. So if you don't have this code, which you sure don't, you can check the video that I put out about folia, or you can just stick with bucket. And in this case, you, you're just going to need to type bucket or enable. And if you don't understand how tasks work, we have a custom video that I put out about bucket task. I believe it's one of the first 10 videos that I put up. So I'm just going to duplicate that field. There we go. And then I'm just going to create this as a timer. It's going to run for every say two uh, ticks. And then this one tablet task, I can just duplicate this right here and be item pickup task like this one. There we go. And here inside, I can just delete everything, clean it nice and smooth. There we go. And then go back here and type in item pickup task. And also don't forget to add reload support right here. I can just cancel it when the plugin is being disabled or reloaded. Now inside this thing right here, what I'm going to do, first of all, I have to iterate through all players that are currently connected. There we go. And then we have to find if they are nearby an armor stand. Let me just finish up the imports. So basically I'm going to create a custom field here and then I can take advantage of the player get world get nearby entities method provided by bucket, which is going to take in the center location, right? And from the center location, I want to have a look at the X, Y, Z three. So the radius is going to be three blocks. And then this is the filter. So this is actually a new predicate. Let me just show this to you the good, good old way. And this one will return if the entity is an armor stand, right? And this whole thing can then be simplified to Lambda looking like this. However, if you are pro, then you can just use method reference and call the class is instance method. Not a lot of people actually know about this, which is pretty cool. Great. So this is the first thing how to automatically get all of these nearby entities in case I'm standing less than three blocks away from them. And then if and then this one is actually, remember, I was uh, tweaking the location inside the listener. I was adding this. So here I just subtract this location to make it closer to the player to add to the accuracy. If I'm standing less than 1.5 blocks close, as you can see how this will work, right? So if I'm standing 
Oh, there we go. That was about one block and then 0 0.5, right? So if I'm standing close to it, then automatically I'm going to be uh, collecting that item. That means that I can assign the first item to collect to the field and then just break out of that loop. And then we have to check if the item was found, otherwise nothing will happen. And then I have to get the time that it was placed or time dropped. So item drop time by opening the persistent data container, getting the key. And then again, I have to specify this long thing. Don't worry about that too much. And then this one cannot actually be a primitive type because if you open up this, this get method, it'll say, it'll say that it's nullable. So it can actually return a null. Java will complain if you use primitives and return null to them because they need to have a value. However, you can use wrapper type and wrapper type can also can be null. So here we can simply check if the item drop time has been set and then if the time right now minus the time. So this is the current time, which is always going to be greater minus the placed time. If the difference is um, greater than 800 milliseconds, which is 0 0.5 seconds, then what I can do, I can get the item in main hand and then, okay, so I can delete this check. If the item is not air, and if we have a slot ready to collect the item in the inventory, meaning that there is an empty slot to it, then what I can do, I can just play the player a nice entity pickup sound, and then I can just add the item from the ground to the inventory. And then finally, I'll just destroy the, uh, the placed entity, the armor stack right here. So it disappears. If you didn't do this, you could just collect, you know, duplicate as many items as you wish, which is obviously not desirable. Anyways, guys, let me crack into the game again. Let me check if everything is working correctly. Awesome, guys. So if I drop anything, you can see that the armor stand actually appears. This is because I deliberately disabled this just to show you how this will work. However, if I make this armor stand invisible and I place an item, there we go. Now the item appears on the ground and this works for 3D items as well as these uh, 2D item models and even for swords and armor, which actually makes them look pretty damn cool when dropped. The only thing that I didn't do is I didn't make them automatically rotate. So the sword will always appear in the same rotation. This is something that you can actually do as a homework for this video, as an extension of this training, which is going to be cool. And you can also see that when I'm getting closer to them, I can actually collect them, right? However, I can't collect them right away. So if I place them, I have to wait 0 0.8 seconds before collection. So it simulates buckets behavior. Plus also, I don't know if you can hear it, but there is a nice pop sound. Anyways, guys, that's it for me for from me for today. I hope that you enjoyed this very cool stuff. Again, we have Project Orion with me personally, seven weeks of coaching, including this, including so much more. It's very advanced, doesn't require you to have any coding experience i'll leave the link for it in the description check it out if you want to learn more otherwise i hope that you enjoyed this video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already comment below give it a nice thumbs up if you enjoyed and i'll see you next time by the way as i mentioned the link with the source code is in the blog post and there is a link to the blog post with resources uh, below in this video thank you cheers